Hey everyone, Shayfire here, and welcome to a new series. We are going to be playing Asagayo Academy today. And I am joined by my friend Willow. Willow is actually a very awesome friend of mine, as well as she likes to make YouTube videos as well. She's going to be recording this series for her channel as well, so I would actually recommend also taking a look at it on her channel as well. I'll be putting a link to her channel as well as the playlist for this video down in for her series all the way down in the description below. So, hi Willow! Hello! Shall we get started? Things. Shall we get started on this game then? Uh, okay then, let's do it. Also, I think you're pronouncing it wrong, by the way. I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, three, two, one. There we go. Did you hit play? Yes. Alright, hitting play <laughs> You're now. slightly behind me now, aren't you? I'm like a second one. behind. I hit- I saw the chapter <laughs> Okay, I got thing. the first line of dialogue. <laughs> the, you wanna read it then? Yes, yeah, the train made its way along the gentle curve of the coast of Japan, whisking me further and further and further from home. Other, whatever. This is set in Japan then, lovely. Yeah. Across from me, <laughs> across from me sat a boy, half buried in the newspaper. Great. He's in... Oh, fuck me. Why did I decide to do a visual novel? I'm bad at English. <laughs> just, just read it. He deeply entranced in whatever the article was. He, reading, he hadn't spoken a single word to me, even when I asked if I could join him in the last compartment of available space. What a dick. Who's sitting across from this girl? <laughs> I mean, I don't know it's a girl. Dear diary, <laughs> even though that today was... is the day I finally go to Asago <laughs> Academy. I couldn't sleep at all last night. When Dad dropped me off at the train station, he held my hand and stroked my hair. You look like your mother did, he said, but he didn't elaborate. I miss Mom. I miss Dad. What the hell are you? I hit the go button! But hopefully this will be my fresh start. <laughs> That's completely different text to what I have. What do you have, then? <laughs> the void of conversation, instead of counting the buttons on large carmine seats and cushions. 1, 2, 3, 21, 22, How so forth, over and over. I don't know. <laughs> oh man, then I have. Oh, I hit the journal by accident. That's how. <laughs> <laughs> I skipped some text by accident. <laughs> he shrugs, nodded, and adjusted his newspaper without ever making eye contact. It had been almost an hour, in fact, and he hadn't looked at me once. Looked at me. Did you read that one? Um, I'm on now and again. I turned to look out the window, and there were trees blurring okay, by. Okay, void of conversation. I took. I then stop. Then stop doing it, and I will catch up to you, and just wait. You catch up, and then I'll continue. <laughs> Devoid of conversation, I took instead to counting the buttons on the pretentiously lush carmine seat cushions. One, two, three, twenty-one, twenty-two, and so forth, over and over. How do you skip every other number and get straight to twenty-one? Now uh, and again, I think that was a time skip. <laughs> now and again, there I turned to look out the window where the trees were blurring by. Sometimes the smeared green would break and reveal the quiet blue of the sea of Japan. Uh, now you've caught up. This rapidity made my stomach churn, and I went back to counting the buttons on the cushions. You can do the um, oh, you can do the narration stuff. One, two, and I'll voice the actual three. character. The train compartment shuddered around us. My eyes wandered to the boy in his jacket. It wasn't the school issued blue that I and the other students on the train were wearing. Instead, it was a green, varsity-like jacket with an embroidered patch, poorly sewn on front. Hmm. Look, it's Pro Jared! <laughs> <laughs> you get to read oh, it, there are, uh, Brilliant! Love it! <laughs> oh my god! Um, okay, give me a second. It crashed, <laughs> then it came straight back to where it was. Did you have Shall I voice Pro Jared? Do it! Do it! <laughs> I can't do his voice, but okay. So you're the first year then. You can do the narration shit. He folded his newspaper neatly, set it in his lap, and looked at me with a half-interested gaze. Did he just catch me staring? Now that the paper was gone, I saw his face. He watched me through heavy-lidded eyes. His hair was immaculately groomed, his teeth straight and blindingly bright. There was something about him, the way the light hit him, that made him look like he was almost... sparkling? Um, yeah, that's Jared, will you? Do you want me to voice Hana, too? and then You, you voice can be him. Hana. Me? <laughs> he glanced around the compartment, empty beside us, and laughed. Oh. Oh no, I'm not a first year. I'm a third year. 
the train began to slow, metal wheels groaning against metal tracks. The sudden shift threatened to rob me of whatever was left in my stomach, but I closed my eyes and took a deep breath, willing myself to keep it together. What kind of impression should I leave puking on a student before I even arrived at the academy? The boy frowned. I picked at the hem of my cotton skirt. Mm. That's Jared, right? Yeah. That's not possible. I've never seen you before. It took me a moment of mouth fishing to find a response. Mouth fishing? <laughs> mouth fishing? <laughs> what is mouth fishing? I don't know. Uh, I, um, I think I may have skipped that quickly. It's because I'm a transfer student? I am on the same screen though, by the way. He laughed again. Transfer student, huh? We don't get many of them. Please. I removed my acceptance letter from the front pocket of my uniform. The paper, heavyweight, off-white, had accumulated creases from my reading and rereading, as if the words might have changed since the last time I read it. The boy took it, studied it, then handed it back to me. I'll see you around. Well then, Hannah, I suppose I'll see you around. Even though he actually just said that. I know, right? <laughs> like, of course, it's like... If actually voice voiced a... by Pro Jared as well. That's actually him. <laughs> That's awesome. He smiled at me as he picked up the suitcase lying next to him. By the time I picked up the response, by the way, I keep an eye on the time. He was already gone from the compartment. I stared out into the empty hallway of the train. It was then that I realized he, having gotten it from my acceptance letter, knew my name, and I never got his. The train settled at the station, and I filed out with the rest of the uniformed students. It was early April, and the last frost of winter had come and gone. The trees were already green, their leaves shivering in the occasional gust weaving through them. The air was mild, only a few clouds hanging in the sky. I walked along the road with a swarm of blue-jacketed bodies looking at the little groups breaking off from the crowd. Everyone was buzzing so animatedly around me. I held my suitcase tight in my sweaty hands. It was leather-bound and worth more than anything it contained. It wasn't far to the school, and I was, for maybe the first time in my life, thankful that what I owned didn't amount to much. My school-issued black oxfords click, click, clicked on the pavement. I walked this walk over and over in my mind. So many nights I lay awake, imagining what it would be like to walk from the train station to Asagayo Academy this first time. My new start. I always imagined that everything would change for me on this walk. That somehow, everything would be magically different. But as I looked around, I realized nothing had changed. I hadn't changed. By the time I reached the massive gateway to the academy, I forgot all about the disappointment slouching in the back of my throat. The school, framed by the gate's twisting black metal, was just as beautiful as the glossy photos I saw in its pamphlets. This was it. A Sagayo Academy. I glanced around. The swarm of students gathered around the gate. Beyond it, tiny blue people bounced around the academy's main building. A girl pressed a button to one side of the gate. The excitement in the air was almost palpable. A few moments later, the black gate, with great effort, creaked outwards and cleared the pathway. As the rest of the group shifted in motion, I followed along, a sheep in the herd. My stomach tied itself in knots. The crowd split off in different directions. For a moment, I panicked. <laughs> A tired-looking man with graying hair called out for first years, a cluster of fresh-faced students gathering around him. He looks quite interesting. Do you see him? Yeah, he does, and I accidentally clicked the X. Right. Yeah, I saw him, but I'm already on the next part. I wonder who Tall Boy is. I should probably voice that person, I'm, right? I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna voice Hannah and all the narration, so you can do all the boy voices. <laughs> hey, hey, look at that grill! I'm gonna call him. <laughs> yes, the grill. I turned. A few feet away, a small group of boys were pointing at me and snickering. Yeah, are you kidding me? How desperate can you get? Hot shame crawled down my neck. I attached myself to a group of girls, following a few steps behind them. In the distance, cicadas hummed in time to my shoes crunching against gravel. My hair. It wasn't my fault that my hair looked like this. Luckily, I found myself at the girls' dormitory. 
a large sign in the lawn reading Primrose House. You know you can dye your hair. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. It's like, if you don't like pink hair, just dye it. It is your fault your hair is pink. It's not... I mean, I have purple hair because I want purple hair. Well, I've got red hair because I love it. The building dwarfed me in size and sheer intimidation. How many students did Asagayo have? As I approached the building, a red-headed girl lingering nearby caught my attention. I looked away. It's me. <laughs> then looked back. She was staring at me. She walked over. Oh, you must be my roommate! She pretty much voiced that herself. Yeah, we'll just let her voice her own lines and only read the ones that need to be... I eyed her warily. She was smiling and bouncing in a way that suggested her views on life were akin to a perpetual bouncy castle. Is she talking about her chest? I... I don't know. I'm... I just ask it. I know, I like how her chest is the first thing that comes to mind when it comes to perpetual bouncy castle. Uh, my what? mind is going bad places already. <laughs> me? Oops. Your line. You want me to voice her too, or you? Um, no, I should probably voice her, shouldn't I? It's of course, you. you silly. Let me get you to your room. I read that completely wrong, but whatever. Yeah, room 325. I thought back to the paper I received a month prior with a list of all the supplies I needed for the year and my dorm arrangements. Uh... Um, yeah, that's right. <laughs> she laughed, but I couldn't figure out what was so funny. Was she laughing at me? When I found out my roommate was a transfer student, I knew you were going to be a total main character. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> it's so meta. <laughs> what the fuck? It's so meta. <laughs> oh my god. I'm sorry? A what? Uh... Mm -hmm. When I saw you outside the gate, I knew it was you. I mean, look at that hair. <laughs> I felt a lump forming in my throat. This is gonna be a fun trip. What was she talking about? She had to be making fun of me. I hadn't spent more than five minutes on campus and I was already being mocked. My hands began to tremble. Is... is there something wrong with my hair? Her face slackened from its amused smile to a more worried expression. Oh, she's getting all red. Like, look at her face. Oh. Then she began to laugh again. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. It's great. I'm sorry. There um, she, <laughs> she voiced her own line. She can do it. It's funny Fuck. how, like, half of the lines are voiced. We're getting off on the wrong foot, aren't we? Oh, gosh. Damn um, it, girl. Stop voicing your own line. Please some work. I'm my Sasaki. You must be Hana. About oh, what's again? <laughs> Hello. It's nice to meet you, Mai. All your school books are waiting in your room. With a welcome letter. Read the envelope. <laughs> I <laughs> just, read the envelope. No, I just read the envelope. And I read the envelope. I hope you're not mad. Mai started walking towards the dorm's front doors. I followed behind like a lost puppy. Oh, for Asmin, did you check in the front door already? No, I didn't. I didn't know I was supposed to. <laughs> the offer, the offer to have staff member give you your tour of the campus, but you can also, I can also show you around. We don't have many transfer students. Don't have many transfer students in year three, really? I thought that was quite a common <gasps> thing. Get him. Is that your only bag? Just the one? <laughs> I'm glad I brought a bag of extra stuff just to decorate our room with. I started already. I hope you don't mind. It's just porn. It's porn everywhere. Oh, she, she's just got porn slapped all over the walls. Uh, you just want hentai porn on the walls, don't you? Yes! Yes, I do! <laughs> <laughs> but what, what, I did wait to string the lights, I thought we could do that together, you know. She spoke quickly, the words bubbling from her mouth, and left me no time to answer until the end of her monologue. Yeah, okay, that sounds good. 
She held the front door open. So we should leave that. And I hurried inside. Yeah, I'm gonna hit save. Yep, yeah, come here.